Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Makina Auto Features and this time we are going to be talking about Subaru founded in 1955 but they've actually been on much longer than that for all of that they were dabbling with machines that could fly of course to us Subaru gained prominence when they introduced to us all-wheel drive I mean good quality all-wheel drive then passenger vehicles I mean cars that are meant for us the public and when they mated this with a turbo this was back in the 80s put rally type of performance into the realm of relative affordability. My, my family never got into Subaru. I, it was always through a friend of a friend, always from a distance. But still, it never stopped them from beaming a strong light towards me. I mean, the reputation of Subaru is, is really, really strong. The reason why I, I would guess that my family didn't get that when I was growing up was because it was going up against more affordable Japanese brands and that people were just more used to. Subaru always had this level of we're high up here with performance and we're gonna cost a little bit more. And I guess that's the reason why. But now things change. Why? Because my brother ended up buying one. <laughs> I'm like, really? You bought a Subaru? Okay, game. Pahiram. <laughs> so that got me really excited and I, and I went over to his place and I borrowed it. This, folks, is the recently updated Subaru Outback. This is Machina Auto Features. Jumps and I wake up at you Think that's pretty clever Don't you bore Fighting on your motorcycle Watching all the ground beneath your drive Subaru Outback, when we say crossovers as far back as we can say crossovers, the Outback has always been a top choice on the table. Subaru came out with this iteration of the Outback three years ago. Now we have an aesthetically revamped, younger looking Outback with lots of cool upgrades here and there. Peppered with some substantial safety features making this a compelling car to consider in this segment. Outside, the most noticeable difference is the face of this crossover. We have a new headlight. It's got some steering responsive LED lights. It'll go in point to where you steer. So if you're steering this way, the headlights are going to go like this. If you steer this way, the headlights are going to go that way. So that's pretty cool. The lower cladding, the lower bumper has been redesigned and the grille is also now bigger. Overall, it's like the Outback took a sip from the fountain of youth. It looks younger and quite relevant with what's going on in the world today. There is only one variant in our country and sans the engine, we get all the belts and whistles. And when I say sans the engine, what they have in other countries, they have the turbo. They have a better engine, but not all the safety amenities. What we have, we have the base engine, 2.5 liter engine, but it's got all safety amenities and all the high techery in it so that's the difference look over to the side of the car the side view mirror also has some brushed aluminum caps on it now so i really really like that there is some chrome here and there and you guys know me if you watch uh, a lot of my bike reviews i always say that i'm not a big fan of chrome so you've got some chrome here on the door frame it's okay but it would have been better if it, were, if, it, if it was aluminum i think in the rear it looks pretty much same same except for the lower part of the bumper which has some metal trim right now in the wheels we have 18 inches the other countries they get 17s and tailgate is now power operated and the other variants in other countries they have a camera a rear view camera that's integrated with a mirror and that camera is mounted on the shark's fin at the roof what we have right now is just a simple analog mirror Colors for the Outback, we have a lot. And what we have in front of us, of course, is the crystal white pearl. For the engine, we have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer engine with four cylinders. This has 182 horses dishing out 176 pound feet of torque. Not 
not bad, especially for where we are at in this world. Now, I would understand if in places like in Europe where the highways are really big, in the United States, the average speed cruising, these highways would be around 80 miles per hour, 130 kph. You would need that extra oomph, get or take those speeds. And where these countries are looking for V6s, 8s, and where power is really needed. In our country, where are we going to do that, right? <laughs> We're probably going to be overtaking at 60, 70, or 80 kilometers per hour. And during those speeds where we can really use this power, that's where it would matter for us. Okay, now this is a pretty clean engine bay, pretty clean layout. Again, you can see the quality that it is offering in this price range. Very, very nice. And this is not like uh, some of the other European cars where everything is just closed. I kind of see some of the guts. I kind of prefer it that way as opposed to everything's just covered up. Everything is in place. Pretty good. Very, very nice. Of course, the pro side of this scenario, of this configuration with the Subaru Outback is efficiency. But the power that it's giving and the efficiency it's giving, it's pretty good. Also, it's got a CVT transmission and that's also very economical. Although I'm not a big fan of CVTs regardless of what brand is in front of me, I just prefer a good old automatic. Although this car, I feel there has a, a bit of pseudo shifting. They just place it in there somewhere and I can't put my finger on it. It's there somewhere, but it's not the same thing. All of that together is just coming up with a really frugal car with, again, the power that it's giving. Frugal, I mean this car can do 13.6 kpl the highway and when you're in the city between 9 to 12 kpl, so absolutely not bad. The Outback still has the same AW tech, all-wheel drive technology and it is simply just one of the best that the world has seen. It is in this car. Hello Hans, marami marami salamat. So, napansin ko was one, whenever ako ay na-distract, alam niya eh. So yes. can you tell us about that? What's that feature? We have a system called Driver Monitoring System that offers a personalized driving and there are sensors inside the interior that can sense your eyes to wherever it is looking. You're driving and then natin yung ka dito. Huli ka. Yes, the, the system will automatically beep and then will remind you to look forward. So kung meron kang selosong pasahero na kasama mo tapos bigla na palingon ka sa hindi dapat at bigla sabihin niya kanino ka tumitingin sabihin, sabihin mo wala naman eh eh huli ka na nga ni Subaru Outback na tumitingin ka sa hindi mo dapat tinitingnan. <laughs> so basically it's keeping your eyes on the road for safety. Okay yes. great. Okay let's fire it up. So that's your nice intro. What's cool about this, it, it has face recognition and it will adjust your settings, how high your steering wheel is, your, your seat and all of that through face recognition. Other cars a few years back would have like set one, set two, set three. It would have it here on this side too. Depending on who's using the car, you just gotta manually press the button on who's assigned to what. I'm gonna shut it down really quick and this is really cool. This is the first time I've seen something like this in a car. And if I shut it off, it'll tell me this. It says, reminder, look in rear seat. <laughs> and I actually felt the need to do that. And why does it do that? It reminds you if you need to get something at the back. Take a look at your kid, right, before going down. <laughs> so if ever uh, you already left the car, and then you forgot that you have someone inside <laughs> the car, and then you locked the car. So automatically, the car will alarm and remind you that to check the car as well. So, ibig sabihin, maski na hindi mo chinek yung likod, umalis ka pa rin, alam ng, ko ng kotse if there's somebody at the back. Yes. It's not a funny thing, but in the United States, this happened. Tragically, a few years ago in the Midwest, in the United States, there was a dad who left his twins in the car. Cold day in the summer heat. Unfortunately, it is sad, it is shocking, those two kids died. The dad was just a tired, overworked guy, completely forgot he brought his kids with him. They just left his mind. I totally get this feature. Thank you, Subaru, for doing this. Some of the other updates we have is this huge 11.6 inch display or about 30 cm. And I love it. Many things to check when you go in deep. Again, same, if you know how to get into a modern phone, you'll figure this one out easy. I'm also digging how we have some analog knobs integrated with the screen and everything is not touch screen. Nothing like good old knobs and buttons, I always say. Our head unit, this is pretty impressive too. It's nice and big. You got your car info, driving statistics, 
uh, your maintenance schedule. Very, very nice. Oh, here's home. Let's go to radio. Okay, not bad. Of course, a lot of access to the head unit um, can be accessed through the steering wheel, which is pretty much the norm with actually every car out there already. You can also connect your phone with this to access Android Auto wirelessly before you had to plug it in. That said, it still has some connectivity. We have USB slots for Type A and Type C at the front and Type A at the rear. Ah, nice. Good quality, good quality. Now, if I were to nitpick, like absolutely nitpick and say if there's anything here that's not up to par with the luxuriousness that Subaru is offering in the Outback, I would say it would be the plastic here. It's not bad, okay? It's, it's okay, but it's just not this level. <laughs> what they're offering here is not what I see here. But again, I'm just nitpicking. Apart from that, everything's pretty good. So this is like, you know, it's like, it's, it's a bit fast. It's like... Wow! Open! We're in, as opposed to, it, it could be like this. Right? Slow and elegant, and just put your shades there, your glasses, or whatever, you know? Condom. For space, I am six feet tall, and yes, it is pretty roomy for me everywhere. Seating position, it's pretty comfortable, it's pretty hand and glove for me. And uh, for all you shorter folks, don't worry, you can adjust everything to your body, no problem. For space, gazing at the Outback, it looks long, right? But the allotment for that is more for bringing along stuff. Room we are at 100 cm or 39.5 inches, so it has more space than the RAV4, but it's going to be smaller than a Honda CRV. You'll have more cargo loading capacity. So give or take, there's a trade-off. Space at the back, it's pretty decent and substantial at 2.1 cubic meters of space with the rear seats down. With the rear seats up, you're gonna get a cubic meter. So against the competition in this segment, it's only the Honda CRV that can outspace this. Harman Kardon sound system. So if you pull this, This one too. So what would be nice if I pull this, that thing would automatically go back. <laughs> but you can't have everything. Now let's talk about EyeSight. This is Subaru's proud moment. It is their active safety feature. And for this year, it has been updated. Camera has a wider field of view. It's got a brake booster. It's got collision warnings, automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, and lane centering, which I actually really, really appreciate. I tried uh, Sorrento in Florida last year. Uh, in the highway, I put the, the, the adaptive cruise control. It was okay, but it felt like it was a bit delayed, like last minute. Are you going to turn? Are you going to turn? And you want to just grab the steering wheel. Um, but this one, it was just dead on, very responsive. It was reacting as the curve was happening in the highway. So good job, Subaru, with that one. So there's a lot of safety going on here, huh? Not, sir. And this is also made in Japan. Yes. Actually, every unit that you see here is made from Japan. Arigatou gozaimasu! Hi! <laughs> I just want to look at this really quick. Sure. This one is actually something that you can swivel para siya maging crossbar. Yes. Can you show us how that, that's done? So as easy as that. That goes to um, the other side. Yeah, para mag cross -member. This one goes right there. Done. Yeah. Leather seats, we have the very durable and good looking Napa leather. So in this price point, this is the part where I can say that the Subaru Outback is holding its own against cars that are in the 3 million peso and up range. Good job Subaru on the interior. Now riding it around town in terms of the feel of how it's propelling me, well like I said, CVTs, it's just generally not my thing. That said, there's still some effort put into this. It's got an eight-speed manual mode, which is all right. You can access that through the pedal shifters. Because of how it's designed in conjunction with the engine, you're gonna get more oomph and fun in the higher rev range. You just gotta dig into the pedal to get more or feel the power of the car. Suspension front and back is pretty balanced. Ground clearance, it's like it's built for the pH so you can handle some big humps in the village fine. For its size, I was expecting a lot of roll, but to my surprise, it was actually keeping upright really well. Turning, you're, you're expecting the whole thing to roll, right? But no, it's nice and steady and upright. Good job on tuning the suspension for that. 
Now visually with my size in the cabin, the B pillar and the A pillar, it's not as thick as some of the other modern cars nowadays. We have lesser blind spots in this car. So visually it's safer than a lot out there. Get a nice good view around. Front, peripheral, and with your rear view mirror. One of the plus points for this car is how quiet it is. Well, the quietest car in my garage right now is a 2012 ML350 Benz. Now that is a really quiet car considering it's a diesel. Now compared to my GLA 180 though, a smaller Benz, the Subaru actually muffers more high frequencies. It's a pretty quiet car. So there are certain parts around the metro wherein the road noise would be louder, depends on the kind of road you're on. The thing with the Subaru, first impression, it's a big wow thing. As soon as you step, it's like wow. And then as you get along, as you start to scrutinize it, as soon as you try to get a feel and be more attuned to what you're hearing, what you're feeling when you're riding the car, and then you're comparing this with the C-Series of Benz, the newer ones, or even perhaps the new Touring 3 Series from BMW, is that extra 1 million worth it? Because the Subaru is giving so much. Aesthetically speaking, just looking at what everything, if you compare pictures to pictures, I would say it's very, 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 very close to what you get with cars in the same category, but they would be more expensive by a million or 1.5 million pesos. Very, very, very close. Aesthetically, visually, look at it, feel it, smell it. It's when you ride it where I feel the acoustics would fall short. Now, mind you, at 2.4 million, I'm just completely nitpicking and comparing it with more expensive cars. But that, that's that, that's how it is, right? We, we challenge cars to what's supposedly better out there and what is the value that this car can give versus those that are more expensive. What are you getting out of it? So far, so good aesthetically. It's just that in the acoustics part, those other cars are just really more quiet. Where does the Subaru Outback shine against the other compact crossovers out there? I'd say it would be with reliability, the space it has to offer, and all the safety thingamajigs that this car has. So that said, with anything out there, peso to peso, you won't go home feeling bad. Ah, there's something better out there. No, this car can go up against anything in its segment. And as I always say, there is no perfect bike out there. There is also no perfect car out there. I have a challenge for Subaru. Since we're already with all of these high tech here, right? I think if they put wireless charging for our phones, that would be killer. Like a little spot in the car where you can place your phone. That would be great for the Outback. Another suggestion I have for Subaru that maybe they can improve on with this car is maybe in the future variants, they can already integrate hybrid technology with this one because a lot of the other brands are already doing this. You're seeing it popping up left and right. Not taking it against Subaru in the sense that Subaru is Subaru. They're, they have something up their sleeves, I am sure. It's just a matter of when are you guys gonna do it? So I think if there's gonna be another update for this particular Outback model, I think hybrid technology would be great. So there you have it, 2.480 million pesos gets you this baby. You get impressive safety tech. You get to experience and own Subaru all-wheel drive awesomeness. It's great on-road, it's great off-road. Plus you get this feeling that you're driving a car that's worth and valued at 3 point something million pesos and up. So it's a deal right there. This is Zach from Market Auto Features, ciao.